All right, so in this video, uh, I'm going to show you guys how to uh, draw Lewis dot structures. So this will be the correct method on how to do that. And uh, rather than just explain, you know, all the rules and then work through an example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with an example, and then I'm going to sort of explain each step along the way. So the ion that I've chosen, the species that I've chosen, is the carbonate ion, CO3 2 minus. So the first step when we draw Lewis dot structures is you want to count the total number of valence electrons. And then you're going to divide that by two, and that's going to give you the number of electron pairs. So what's the number of valence electrons in this thing? Well, carbon has four valence electrons. Oxygen has six valence electrons, and there's three of them. So four plus the quantity of three times six. And then there's also two extra electrons that come from this overall minus two charge. So we're going to actually add two more electrons. And that number you can check is going to end up being, let's, let's see, 18 plus 4, that's 22, 24 valence electrons. And then you're going to divide that number by, by 2, 24 divided by 2 equals 12 electron pairs. So that's the first step. The second step is to identify a central atom. And the way that you're going to choose your central atom is you're going to go with the least electronegative atom. So in that case, our least electronegative atom is carbon. So that's going to be our central atom. So I'm just going to place carbon here. Carbon. Okay, so that was easy. On to the next step. Is you're going to place the central atoms with an electron pair in between each. So since we only have one central atom here, we're not really going to worry about step three. So we can go ahead and skip that one. Step four says we're going to continue adding atoms in increasing electronegative, electronegativity order. So if you need to, you know, maybe sort of brush up on your electronegativity, uh, now would definitely be the time to do that. So, although it doesn't really matter in this problem because you have three oxygens, oxygen, you know, all three of these atoms are oxygen, so they all have the same electronegativity, so you don't have to worry about which ones to add first and, and so forth. Okay, so I'm going to add an oxygen here, here, and here. So that's step four. Step five says, after all non-hydrogen atoms are used, place electron pairs around the more electronegative atoms until each atom has four pairs. Well, okay, if we do that here, that's going to give us this, 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 and this. Okay, so we're almost done. Step six says to add hydrogen atoms to atoms in increasing electronegativity order. So if this thing had hydrogens in it, you would start with the least electronegative atom and start placing hydrogens on it and then work up to the more electronegative, uh, electronegative atoms uh, later on. All right, and there's the last step, which I couldn't fit all on, the, on one page, so... The last step is to use formal charge to move electron pairs to the proper places. So um, if formal charge is something that, you know, you're not really good with, if, if you don't really understand formal charge, I do have a video for that, just posted it the other day, so uh, feel free to check that out. You'll need to know it when you're doing Lewis dot structures, uh, for sure. So this oxygen should have enough to make four pairs. Check for yourself, too, that each one of these atoms has four pairs around it. See, each one of these oxygens has four pairs. Three of them are lone. One of them is shared. Uh, this carbon here has four pairs. Um, one of it's lone, and then three of them are shared. So each atom, in this case, has uh, four pairs around it. So now you're going to use formal charge. Um, this Lewis structure would be correct, except its formal charges don't necessarily add up. If you calculate the formal charge, Remember, when you're studying formal charge, it's necessary that the sum of the formal charges is supposed to equal the charge of the entire chemical species. So 
remember that this, the charge on this entire species, remember, is 2 minus. So if we look at formal charges, well, the formal charge on each one of these oxygens, what is that? Um, it looks like we have six valence electrons minus seven formal electrons, so that's going to be negative. So we have a negative here, a negative here, a negative here, and the formal charge on the carbon is going to be uh, neutral. It's going to be zero. So based on this Lewis structure, um, the sum of the formal charges is actually one negative plus one negative plus one negative. So that is actually three minus. This, the sum of these formal charges actually ends up being three minus. So that's not good. We don't, uh, th that doesn't represent the carbonate ion, which is what we're trying to draw. But the idea is maybe we can move an electron pair somewhere else so that formal charges will add up. And the way that we do that usually is by forming a double bond. So imagine instead of having carbon singly bonded to these three oxygens, what if we instead doubly bonded them to one of them? Okay. So now, let's do formal charge again. It looks like we have a negative here and a negative here. We get the same zero for the carbon, but on this oxygen, it's different. We actually have a neutral, a zero formal charge on this oxygen. So the sum of the formal charges actually does end up being, according to this drawing, um, negative two or two minus. And usually the convention that we use is we either include the charges in the structure itself, or we draw the entire structure and then put it in brackets and then give it a charge. So this is the same as this. In brackets, two minus. So, um, you know, when you start working with a formal charge, it becomes a little bit tricky. Um, but like I said, you know, just practice them and you uh, should be all right. Oh, and one last thing is that usually, um, you know, suppose the formal or the, the sum of the formal charges was exact, um, turned out to be negative two. Um, in that case, the best Lewis dot structure will be the one that has the most, the largest amount of non-zero formal charges. So there's a couple of ways to re rewrite this so that each you know, so that the, the net charge is still two minus, but there's a lot of non-zero formal charges. But you want your Lewis dot structures to have the least number of non-zero formal charges, so more, more uh, neutral atoms. And it turns out that this is the correct way to do that. Um, you, can, you can check that there are 12 electron pairs in this. Um, if you want to count them, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That's correct. The net charge is two minus, and that's how to draw the legitimate Lewis structure for the carbonate ion. So again, like I said, it takes practice, but practice makes perfect. All right.